All right, we ready to go? Sorry I'm late. Good evening. We're going to start our call to order our meeting of this Crescent City City Council for June 20th, 2016. Uh, we just came out of closed session. Is there anything to report out of closed session? Yes, we have one action to report on a motion by Council Member Murray and seconded by uh, Mayor Pro Tem in score. The council voted unanimously to approve and authorize the mayor to sign a legal defense and indemnification agreement with the Elk Valley Rancheria pertaining to the um, Birch Ocean View CSD v. Lafco case. Great, thank you. Okay, can you uh, take roll, please? Councilmember Holly? Here. Councilmember Murray? Here. Pro Tem Inscor? Here. Mayor Gasno? I am here. And Councilmember Holly will lead us in the flag salute. Thank you. Okay, we have no acknowledgments tonight. On our consent calendar, we have six items. We have uh, June 6, 2016 council meeting minutes, warrant claims list, payroll report, budget to actual K-9 Aries retirement, and number six, ordinance number 792, sewer service charges. Is there any public comment on our consent calendar? Okay, seeing no public comment, bring it back to the council. Is there any discussion and or motion? I make a motion we approve the consent calendar items one through six. I'll second that motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Can you please pull the vote? Council Member Holly? Yes. Councilmember Murray? Yes. Pro Tem Inscore? Yes. Mayor Gasna? Yes. And that passes 4 0 with Mr. Short absent. Okay. We are on to item number seven reports and presentations. Proclamation for K 9 Aries Retirement. Mm -hmm. Presentation by Police Chief Ivan Minsel on the retirement of K 9 Aries. Chief, you want to come down? I have a proclamation to read also. You want me to do that first? All right. I will do that. Thank you. Okay. City of Crescent City Proclamation K-9 Aries Retirement. Whereas the City of Crescent City has benefited greatly because of the dedication and hard work of its police officers and K-9 partners who strive to protect us from evil, partic participate in the community, and consistently strive to be helpful to others. And whereas police officer Gene Vitruba and K-9 Aries have been working as partners at the Crescent City Police Department K-9 Unit since September 2012 as K-92, and whereas Officer Vitruba and Aries have conducted over 300 plus narcotic sniffs that resulted in the seizure of illegal drugs or not narcotics on 150 plus occasions, and whereas Officer Vitruba and Aries have worked over 1,200 patrol deployments that resulted in 150 plus apprehensions of criminal suspects over the tour of the duty, over his tour of duty. And whereas Aries' presence in the field greatly enhanced the safety of all law enforcement officers he worked alongside, and whereas Aries' attendance at numerous community events was the delight of children and adults alike, and whereas Aries has concluded his time commitment to the police department's K-9 unit and reached the age that has earned him a retirement from public service, and whereas the city council, by this recognition, wishes to express its appreciation to Officer Vitruva and Aries for their part partnership and teamwork in providing outstanding service, loyalty, and dedication to the City of Crescent City and its community members. Whereas, Officer Vitruva and the City family and all the community members of the City of Crescent City and Del Norte County wish Aries a long, happy, and healthy retirement. Now, therefore, Excuse me. Now, therefore, I, Ron Gasno, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Crescent City and on behalf of the entire city council, do hereby commend K-9 Aries for his years of valuable service and commitment to the public safety and express our sincere thanks on behalf of the city of Crescent City. Thank 
Uh, he's being kind of quiet back there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on up, Chief. And how about you, Officer Vitruva and Officer Aries? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, fellow council members. I'd like to uh, acknowledge some, some guests here tonight, along with the police department, is former Chief uh, Doug Plack attending here, and one of our other guests of honor, Mrs. Retruba, Teresa. Um, Kimmy, can you do the clicker thing? This PowerPoint will quickly just go through. You know, I can't even see that thing. Okay, there we go. Here's uh, Aries Rapsheet. He came to us in uh, 2012, but he was born in 2008. Went through the academy in the summer of uh, 2012 and officially hit the streets in September of 2012. And then tonight will be his retirement. Some of his career highlights is our mayor. Uh, outlined in the proclamation as patrol narcotics tracking the suspects apprehension and most recently our school resource officer program some of the uh, narcotics seizures that he's done um, methamphetamines heroin marijuana lsd uh, mushrooms and some prescription meds and a uh, distinguished career of service here is uh, officer retrieval and aries in front of our our sign here in front of the city and he's his training as he goes through here. Uh, canines have worked a number of assignments throughout the military and police assignment throughout our country's history, dating back to uh, the Western days when we were cowboys and uh, in the various wars where uh, dogs have come up as uh, trackers, uh, bomb detection, uh, bloodhounds, and tracking lost and children and such. And uh, Aries. Uh, today and in, in 2016 has a number of those skills that unfortunately for the city will be retired from he'll be sniffing out biscuits and here are a couple more pictures of him and his training uh here he is, hits the street with uh officer retruba his partner and these are some of the things they've come across in in, in their in their patrol function here's he as a school resource officer working through the halls of our high school the lockers Many of the things that canines do is prevention, and this is one of the things, and the school board has been ecstatic about having Aries there, and they are deeply going to miss him. Again, and the students loved him just as much. Uh, he was comfortable in anybody's office, as you can see. And uh, of course, uh, the adoring public, the Aries was a hit. He could take the wind out of any superstar's uh, sails when he showed up, because he was, he was a big ham. And then again, a few things that he did to the public out there, showing how he produced. And then of course, today, June 20th, 2016, Aries, like all of us look at, his retirement. We have a couple of presentations we'd like to give here and have with the council's permission. On behalf of Crescent City and the Crescent City Police Department, I'd like to recognize Teresa Vertruva, who, a silent partner, uh, when Aries went home. He was he invaded her space and became quite part of her life. So, Teresa, come on down. <laughs> I'd like to present you with this certificate of appreciation. This certificate is awarded to Teresa Vertrubo in recognition of her valuable contributions to the city of Crescent City for her support of the canine program and Aries during this tour of duty, signed this date by the Chief of Police. Thank you so much for everything you've done in the, in the years that uh, Aries has been out there because you have made a difference. Thank you so much. Yes. <clears throat> your, your adopted Harry son. <laughs> the second one here is for Officer Vertruba, and we're going to save the best for last. For Officer Vertruba, uh, the relationship between you and Aries is a special one, as in law enforcement partners do everything. And uh, here's something from all of us to you.
Mr. Mayor, with your permission, I'd like to invite Sergeant Ellen to the podium. Please. Good evening. So probably the most important of all, on behalf of the Crescent City Police Department, we'd like, yeah, you know what's in there. We'd like to present Aries with this gift basket for all his years of service and a little token to let him know how much we're gonna miss him and his constant barking in the back of the <laughs> patrol office at the, all the cats and the hair he leaves on our uniforms after a visit. Oh yes, this will be gone in about 30 seconds. <laughs> Well, get you. to the good stuff, get to the good stuff. Is that a muzzle I see in there? <laughs> <laughs> he will have muzzle that. <laughs> he will be next. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant. Mr. Mayor, fellow council members, uh, Officer Petruba and Naries. It's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute honor and a pleasure to work with such an amazing animal. Forgive me if I get a little, uh, yeah. told myself I wasn't going to do this. Yeah, we're he, all, huh? You know, he truly is. Um, you know, the, the old adage, a dog is a man's best friend. Well, he's everybody's best friend. And, uh, and it's very true. Um, you know, he uh, came to me at uh, a good age. He's provided service well to the city. Um, but about that, he was there for me. Sorry. I knew this was going to be rough because he's my baby. Yeah. He's my buddy. He's my pal. He is my partner. And I can't tell you how many times he's, if he wasn't there with me, I probably could have been very hurt. Yeah. But I get to see him every night when I get home from work. Um, so um, thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to work for the city of Crescent City and be able to be partnered with such an amazing animal, such as Aries. He's my friend, and I want to thank you. Thank the, uh, thank the citizens for all their support, <clears throat> all the functions that we've been able to be a part of throughout uh, his, his uh, years of service. Uh, the children love him to death. <laughs> he's, a, he's a great PR dog, <laughs> definitely. He loves, uh, he loves the attention. And I'd like to thank uh, Police Chief uh, Doug Plack, too, for giving me the opportunity oh, those years ago when he was still here with us in our department. Um, he, he believed in me, knew I could uh, step, up, step up to the plate and be a good partner with Aries, and I want to thank him for that as well. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Way to go, Gene. Not a dry eye in the place. <laughs> okay. I understand that item number eight. Thank you, officers, for being here. Thank you for everything you do. I, I understand item number eight has been pulled. No, okay. So we will not have item number eight tonight. <laughs> We do have item number nine, presenta uh, presentation by Public Works Director Eric Weir on the status of the ICDBG Fire Hall Project and Fire Hall Seismic Retrofit Project. Mr. Weir. Had to get a look at where the uh, attachments were, but yes, we're making progress on the Fire Hall ICDBG Project. Uh, just a, a quick little reminder for the council or for the uh, general public watching out there. This is our fire hall seismic retrofit and remodel project in which the seismic retrofit portion was funded through a FEMA grant as well as a city match and additional uh, contribution that was needed to complete that project. And then we have the ICDBG, which is the building modernization project in which the city partnered with the Elk Valley Rancheria 
and they received an ICDBG grant, an Indian Community Development Block grant, to complete the, uh, the renovation or modernization of the fire hall facility, as well as purchase a new fire truck. So that grants in the amount of approximately 800,000 with the city match. So we, we put the bid documents together, we put it out to bid. Uh, we needed two bids in order to comply with the grant requirements, and we did receive two bids, uh, thanks in part to a local contractor, GR Construction, George Mayer, who also submitted a bid, as well as Adams Construction, who is currently the uh, contractor that's working on the seismic retrofit portion of the project. So here's the bid result summary. You can see that the engineer's estimate was $371,000 for this particular portion of work, which now also includes the exterior accessibility component that uh, that we need to complete as part of the project. GR Construction came in at 291,660 and Adams uh, came in at 368,129. As you see in looking at these, the big area of difference between the engineer's estimate, GR Construction and Adams is the accessibility improvement portion. So after the bids were open in talking to GR Construction, they had made a material error in that particular portion of their bid and they they didn't include a lot of what was actually required so they requested that their bid be withdrawn because they just completely missed that component uh, of which the uh, the rancheria uh, is is uh, is considering withdrawing that they haven't taken formal action but that is what's proposed so we have our action to believe that that is going to be the case that gr constructions bid due to this material error will be withdrawn from the process although their bid still pays huge dividends on the project because now we still have two bids. So we're complying with the grant requirements and if appropriated from the Elk Valley Rancheria, we can go with Adam's bid, which is still very close to the engineer's estimate as you can see, and very close to their original bid on all these items. So we feel it is a good bid, it was a competitive bid. Because we had two bids, we can meet the grant requirements. I've been told by the wrench where they're expecting to take action on one, the acceptance of the withdrawal of the bid and then awarding the contract to Adams later this week. So that's moving forward. At that point, we'll be able to issue a notice of award. They can supply the proper bonds. The project should be underway in probably about three weeks. So that's, that's the status of that. If we're going to look at the actual expenditures to give the council an update. Boy, and I'm not, see how, see if I can enlarge that to the point you can actually see. So we have the seismic retrofit portion, which is in the top. This really hasn't changed from what the council uh, saw in our last presentation, where we have the grant amount of 686,000, I believe, and then we have the required city match, and then we have the additional appropriation of funds from the council, totaling about 1.1, seven million for total revenues. Total expenses of the project, we have the design component of 128, seismic retrofit construction bid of 741. We have a contingency built in of $100,000 and then the construction management piece. As far as the contingency goes, because of the overlapping projects, we have started to dip into that contingency. There's been, I believe, three change orders that have been issued, and a lot of it is just trying to keep the contractor going, knowing that we have this second piece coming. So we spent about 74,000 in change orders of that initial piece to keep the project moving. What we have done to make up for that portion is we've incorporated the accessibility component, which used to be in this to the tune of 50,000 and incorporated into the ICDBG portion of the project. So now that's down there and we'll get paid for by the ICDBG. So scrolling down to the ICDBG, again, looking at Total revenues of this, which we had 46,000 to pay for the initial design. We have the ICDBG grant of 605,000, the required city match of 201. And then from the original appropriation, if things go as planned, we'll have 123,000 still remaining. So that gives us our total revenue amount for the ICDBG. Looking at expenses for the ICDBG portion, you have the contractor Adams bids that you see coming down through here, and then a $100,000 contingency of which since the project hasn't started, obviously we haven't used any of that at this point for a total project amount of 533,000. The second half of that is the purchase of equipment. So you have 35,000 to purchase some of the fire engine type equipment as well as some of the kitchen equipment that the city was going to purchase and then the purchase of the truck for 400,000. So you can see that with all of these funds for what the council has already appropriated, with a $100,000 contingency, we're still projecting the project to come in below 
the, the total project expenses will be about $10,000 below what's already been appropriated for the project. If the project goes better than that over the next couple of months, anything that we don't use in this contingency for the ICDBG would obviously then be unspent money to the project that could be returned. So at this point, the project's going well. Uh, it's a little bit behind schedule due to some of the nuances with the ICDBG, but we're still within our project uh, funding appropriations. Great. Eric, is, is the, uh, sorry, is the fire truck going to be turnkey when we get it? We won't have to add anything to it? The, yes, with, with this, with this in place, it will now be turnkey. Right. Uh, we we'll, should have a truck delivered that's going to be fully outfitted. Uh, we should have a fire hall that's going to be have all the modernization components included as well as the seismic. So we'll have new paint, new floor, windows. Uh, yeah. All right, great. Should we good? Eric, I just was, I, I didn't remember. Who did the engineer's estimate that you referred to in the first slide? In the first slide, that was an engineer's estimate that, that we put together in-house. Wow. This, this was an engineer's estimate that was a lot easier to do than most engineer's estimates because we had just bid this. So we had a lot of these components figured out. So this, the, the engineer's estimate was based on the average of the bids that we received the first time. Well, I just want to say congratulations to you because I ne have never seen that kind of the, the estimate and the bids come in so close together. And so it, that's it, what we'd like to see. It, it, yeah, it was, it was close. But again, this, this one was a little bit easier because we had just bid the job. I'd also like to give credit to Adams mm -hmm. for not trying to really take advantage of, of the situation, keeping their prices close to what they were originally on this as well as, as uh, GR Construction for placing the bid. Does the, um, with the uh, modernization project, does that, does this include some of the work? I know that there was some talk about uh, relocating some of our city IT stuff to the fire hall to make it more centrally downtown. Is, is any of that included into this modernization or at least included in the sense of laying the groundwork for that, yes. that possibility? Yeah, so we have a lot of the infrastructure and, the, and the, the location for that will be in place by this. And I believe it is uh, the direction of the city's IT administrator, Fritz Ludman, to make that move. So once this project is done, like we will try to move a lot of the servers and stuff to this location uh, because of, you know, the, 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 yeah, the run up zone where City Hall is, uh, as well as this building will help be completely rebuilt to the most stringent standards as far as seismic uh, strength goes. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Good work. All right. Okay. We are now on to our communications portion of our public comment period. Any member of the audience is invited to address the city council on any matter that is within the jurisdiction of the city of Crescent City. Comments of public interest or on matters appearing on the agenda are accepted. Note, however, that the council is not able to undertake extended discussion or act on non-agendized items. Such items can be referred to staff for appropriate action, which may include placement on a future agenda. Any comments that are not at the microphone are out of order and will not be part of the public record. After receiving recognition from myself, please state your name and city or county residency for the record. Public comment is limited to three minutes. Is there any public comment? Please come on up. I have a a small statement here I prepared. It was before I came over and actually had a sit down with Mr. Knight today. So it may seem a bit scathing. <laughs> um, my family and my- please, please go ahead and state your name and if you're oh, city or county. My name is Thomas Carter from Corning, California. We've been coming over here for about 27 years every summer. Uh, last year we were told when we left here that we could not make our reservations for this year because of the construction so we waited until january we called over and we're told at that time that the spaces we requested were 31 through 35 i believe or 36 that they were available and that we were reserved for those spaces we called back um, actually my sister's cousin came over in april physically walked into the uh, reservation booth there the host thing and talked to them and they said yeah your reservations are still good and then we called back in June now we've had small issues with our reservations in the past so we always keep up on these things well in June we called back and we were told that 
our spaces, our reservations had been changed by somebody within the city that now we were 40 through whatever, they were they're, uh, pulling spaces for motorhomes. They're not fit for our trailers. Um, so I called Mr. Knight over here, and at that time he didn't know much about it. He said, uh, after our sit down today, he said he would check into that. Um, the scuttlebutt is, and this is just hearsay, that they're either friends or someone within the city that has commandeered the spaces for three days rental. We come over, we rent for a month. Um, it seems, it let, just left a bad taste in my mouth and a lot of other people's mouths because of the, the way it happened. Um, that's the essence of my grievance. I'm hoping you guys can figure out what's going on here and get it straightened out within whoever's to blame for it. I, I don't want to see them killed, but they, it wouldn't hurt them to dangle a little, you know. Um, on another note, I'd like to thank the city for their prompt response with the parks division, I guess it would be. Uh, last year I reported to them that they had bad clevises on their swing sets for the little kids. And I did go over there today and look at that, and they've been replaced. So that's a good thing. Thank right. you. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Is there any other public comment? Please come on up. Hi, Eileen Cooper. I just, um, I'm concerned about the birch track um, and the impact that the new casino is going to have on the Birch Track um, water supply system. I, I did go to um, the Birch Track um, uh, water district meeting last month and an engineer was there and, and informed us and his board that yes indeed our the pumps that we've been paying for all these years are going to be running and running and running to supply that casino um, with an exorbitant amount of water. Um, and it's going to wear our, all our system out. And we've been paying for that. We've been paying extra all these years for that. And I don't want to see the little bit of surplus that our water district has in our legal battle with the city and LAFCO, I don't think that's fair to the users who's, who've been, you know, paying into the system and our, um, I don't know, maintenance of our tanks, but it seemed like the big problem would be that our, our pumps, you know, are going to be running all the time to supply that place. And, you know, I don't think um, that LAFCO has done due diligence and, and, and has served the district, the Birch District, well. Uh, and I don't think it's fair um, to just hook on without having a fair square deal with with our users and what we've been paying. I also think that uh, 27 units, I think, is, this is going to be a big place. And I, I think the estimate and is, is way under what's actually going to happen. And um, I, I, the credits that were given to the other, some of it was even to hook on a credit given for the old casino coming off the books, but they're still going to use it for something. So I don't know why we were giving them all this credit. Uh, and certainly the Birch Track wants to take a good look at how much realistically <laughs> they're going to be impacting us. So um, I, I do hope you won't, um, you'll, you'll be fair-minded and, and, and consider us and, and not waste our district's monies on um, legal battles. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Please. Hi, Linda Setter, 5th um, District. I live out in the county. But <clears throat> what Eileen was saying is accurate, Mr. Inscore, Ms. Murray. You guys didn't do your due diligence. You uh, signed away the farm 
without the effects of taking into consideration what we the people out in the birch track are going to be responsible for. We're going to be responsible for the repairs of those pipes, not the casino, and, uh, and for our pumps. And that is, that's negligence. You know, Ms. Murray, I have high expectations for you. I expect you to do your due diligence and understand things before you sign away the farm. You're running for supervisor. I expect higher, higher expectations from you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Okay, see no other public comment. I'm going to close public comment, and we are going to go to item number 10. We're going to adjourn to the Housing Authority. Okay, we are now adjourned, uh, or, uh, commencing as the Crescent City Housing Authority. Can you uh, please do the roll call? Board Member Holly? Here. Board Member Murray? Here. Vice Chair Inscore? Here. Chair Gassner? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Okay, there are no reports or presentations. There is a public comment period. Does anybody want to comment on the Housing Authority? Seeing no public comment, I'll close public comment. We'll go to the consent calendar. We have two items on there. Approval of the regular meeting minutes for March 21st, 2016, and then also the approval of the warrant claims from March 12th, 2016 through June 10th, 2016. Is there any public comment on the consent calendar for the Housing Authority? No public comment. Close public comment. Bring it back to the council. I move to approve the consent calendar. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Can you please pull the vote? Board Member Holly? Yes. Board Member Murray? Yes. Vice Chair Inscore? Yes. Chair Gasna? Yes, and that passes unanimously. Okay, there are no housing directors report. Hello, Megan. Uh, no public hearings, no continuing business, no new business. We are now adjourned from the Housing Authority, and we'll be back on July 18th, 2016. And we are going back, and now we will adjourn to the successor agency for the redevelopment agency. Uh, we're here, nobody's left the dais, so we uh, just do a silent roll call. I have no reports or presentations. There is a com uh, public comment period. Does anybody wish to comment on the successor agency to the redevelopment agency? Okay, seeing no public comment, I'll close that. We do have a consent calendar. We have some approval of the regular meeting minutes from February 16th, 2016, and we have the approval approval of the warrant claims from January 9th, 2016 through June 10th, 2016. Again, is there any public comment on the consent calendar for the redevelopment agency, or excuse me, the successor agency to the redevelopment agency? Okay, seeing no public comment, we'll bring it back. Is there any motions? Move to approve uh, the... Oh, excuse me, I, go ahead. I uh, find out uh, what the um, liquidate, liquidated damages agreement um, warrant is about it was the uh, the, the with xj the i know but i i know who it's to but i um he agreed to start making him and made his first installment okay payment great okay yeah. all right thank you was that the hundred thousand that's the hundred thousand mm -hmm. for five years yes five years okay any other discussion do you have a move? move to approve the consent calendar all right do we have a second I'll second that. All right, we have a motion to second. Please pull the vote. Board Member Holly? Yes. Board Member Murray? Yes. Vice Chair Inscore? Yes. Chair Gasna? Yes, and that passes 4 0. Okay, there's no executive director's report. There's no public hearings. There's no continuing business. There's no new business. We'll adjourn to the next uh, meeting of the successor agency to the redevelopment agency on July 18th, 2016. Okay, whoops. Come on, go back. There we go. Okay, we are now on to public hearings. Item number 12, delinquent sewer charges. Mr. Knight. Thank you, Mayor Gasson, Council Members. We're going to ask our finance director to pro provide you with this report. All right, Ms. Lieber. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. This item is our annual public hearing to place delinquent sewer bills on the property tax roll. Uh, because sewer service is a public health and safety concern, 
the city has the authority to file delinquent sewer bills with the county auditor to be collected on next year's tax roll. City staff sent letters to all of the affected accounts on June 8th, um, informing them of the amounts owed and their right to attend this public hearing and make any objection they may have. The list of delinquent sewer accounts that was provided in your original agenda packet has been updated to include any payments made through today. So that updated list was provided to you this evening. What we are requesting is for you to hold a public hearing, make a determination on any objections, if any are made, and direct staff to file with the county auditor for placement on the tax roll. All right, thank you. Is there any questions? All right, now we'll open up this public hearing. Does anybody wish to make any public comment on delinquent sewer charges? <clears throat> Ms. Sutter. Yep, all right. So there's a lot of people that can't afford their sewer bills, okay? And uh, while I was thumping the road as a candidate, uh, I met quite a few of those people. Some of these people, especially out in the birch track, uh, live in, um, shacks and so you want to take and they're, they're they're way up in their age uh they live on 900 dollars or less a month my neighbor he lives on 300 dollars a month and so you want to beat them down to the ground by taking them and making them pay instead of trying to find another way to help these people now i'm not saying that everybody's that way um, what is deplorable to me is the fact that you have, you don't, you don't run the gamut here in the city, okay? You got downtown businesses that were empty for months, which is considered as blight. You don't charge them a fine, and I know there's an, uh, an old code on the book somewhere that says that these are supposed to, these places are supposed to be fine. In fact, when Ms. Shalong was a city council person, she told me, because Tab and Associates owns a lot of those buildings, that, well, Mr., whoever this Tab guy is, his wife was sick, and, you know, they were just going to let it go. Well, I'm tired of that. If you're going to make people pay for their sewer bills, if you're going to take them to uh, administrative action on them, then you better start making everybody in this city uphold the same kind of laws. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other uh, public comment in this public hearing on the liquid sewer bills? Okay, we will close the public hearing. And we will come back to the council. Any other questions for Ms. Lieber? Or do we have a motion? Discussion? Well, I'd only say that I, I don't think we're unsympathetic for people that, that don't live the kind of lifestyles that make it easy for, for them to pay sewer charges. At the same time, we all share in those sewer charges, and I, I can't see a mechanism through which we, we go ahead and and say some people pay, some people don't, and be the arbiter of all that. Um, these, these people have gotten, I, I, I am talking right now, thank you. Um, so I, it, it, as difficult as it is, when you utilize, you, you, know, you, 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 you eat the dinner, you have to pay for the dinner. You know, that, 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 that's a legal terminology that, that you know, if you pay for the, if you eat the steak, you have to pay for the steak. People utilize the sewer, the sewer and and they have to pay what everybody pays uh, excuse me i don't i don't think you're, you're, you're i being find that unconscionable okay okay you no, I, I would right. move Ms. you know Sutter. you're not going to just sit out here and and, and silence your microphone that's fine turn thank it off you. Silence. thank you please sit down thank you okay Mr. so I, in summary i as difficult as these decisions are for us, I, I don't know where one draws the line and where one doesn't. I don't think we have the ability to pick and choose. In fact, I'm not even sure that would be legal. So I, I would, uh, I would, uh, unless there's further discussion. I, I, there... I will just c comment that, that the idea of portraying the city as being unsympathetic is, is 
that's unconscionable because a year ago we sat here and we had a member of the public who was on this list that came to us and said, I realize that I am in arrears in this. I need some assistance in trying to do this. Our finance director met with the person that night, set up a payment plan and worked to help this person address this need. The reality is, is the city would do that with any citizen who made a good faith approach to say, I, I want to I pay my what, what I'm past due. The city has done that historically. It will continue to do that. Uh, we realize that it is difficult on some people when you get behind, but it's not as if we have not addressed that and provided a mechanism to address the needs of our citizens. And I think that that needs to be clear that we have done that and we will continue to do so. So, go ahead, Mr. Cohen. Okay. Motion? I move to. I move to approve resolution 2016 20, resolution of intention of the City Council of the City of Crescent City, California, determining the amount of delinquent sewer charges for certain parcels of property and authorizing the collection thereof. A second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Please pull the vote. Councilmember Hawley? Yes. Councilmember Murray? Yes. Pro Tem Inscore? Yes. Mayor Gasno? Yes, that passes 4 0. Okay, we are on to item number 13, which is another public hearing, the fiscal year 2016-17 annual budget and appropriations limit. Mr. Knight, Ms. Lieber. Thank you, Mayor Gaston. Council members, um, our finance director is going to give provide council with this report, <clears throat> but I do want to take a minute to thank her for um, all the work she's done preparing this document. And it has been a little bit of a moving target with a lot of changes, but she stayed with it and got it in the ready to hopefully approve form. No, oh, and it's still going to move a lot more. Uh, good evening, Mayor Gastineau and members of the council. This evening we are presenting the fiscal year 2016-17 budget for adoption. This budget is the result of many hours of effort on the part of city staff, department heads, the interim city manager. It's been discussed at the May 23rd budget workshop and the June 6th council meeting. As we were directed by the council on June 6th, this budget includes the one-time expenditure list that was discussed, as well as the $10,000 contribution to the tri-agency. There were a few minor adjustments that came to light during our final review. Those are listed in your agenda packet. Um, there was nothing of significance. This budget includes total appropriations of $18,549,554 for the five major funds, which are the General Fund, Housing Authority, RV Park, Sewer, and Water. Total appropriations for all funds including the five major funds plus the CDBG funds, the successor housing, successor agency, internal service funds, and capital improvement funds are $21,723,331. As you are aware, all four bargaining units are in negotiation and this budget does not reflect any changes that may come out of those negotiations. Our intention is to return with a budget amendment for approval once the new agreements are approved. Uh, our intention was not to review the budget line by line tonight because we've already done that twice, but if you have any questions, we would be happy to answer them. The one other item for approval is the resolution adopting the appropriations limit. This is just a resolution that has to be passed every year. Um, we calculate the appropriations limit using data provided by the State Department of Finance and confirm that our proposed budget is in compliance, which it is. What we're asking is for you to hold the public hearing and adopt the annual budget and the appropriations limit calculation. Thank you. Any questions? I just have one, Ms. Lever. Could you could you give us or give me the page number of, of what the final number was for the one-time ex expenditures? Is is there? 
I don't now it's all just I think it's all budget, it, right? it's, it is all included in the budget now I, I believe um, across all the funds it was just under 500,000 it was okay. 330,000 or so in the general fund right that's okay. off the top of my head but it's close <laughs> That, that would be the 353001. I believe That's that was. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Plus or minus 500 tap. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. We're open up this public hearing on our annual budget and appropriations limit. Is there any public comment? <laughs> Come on up. Please state your name. City County Residency. Three minutes. All right see nothing we're gonna close the public hearing we'll bring it back to the dais what do we have any discussion any motions just just for the record this is the third or fourth time we've considered the budget and made modifications and we're not taking this lightly uh, but I think we've we've done our due diligence on the budget so I I would move to adopt resolution 2016-18 approving the annual budget for fiscal year 2016-17 I'll second that okay that is for uh, resolution number 2016-18 approving the annual budget for fiscal year 2016-17 please hold the vote councilmember Holly yes councilmember Murray yes pro tem in score yes mayor Gasnow yes and that passes Four zero. Okay. Do I hear a motion for number twenty sixteen nineteen? Go while you're hot. <laughs> uh, is that what I am? Yeah. Okay. I uh, move to adopt resolution twenty sixteen dash nineteen, approving the annual adjustment factors for the calculation of fiscal year twenty sixteen seventeen appropriations limit. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Please pull the vote. Councilmember Holly? Yes. Councilmember Murray? Yes. Pro Tem in score? Yes. Mayor Gasson? Yes, thank you. And of course, we will be coming back to the budget. And, and thank you again, everybody, for all your hard yes. work on this and Keep, the, the sacrifices that you've had to make. Keeping it lean and mean. All right. We are on to our third public hearing of the night. The Christen, oh, excuse me, the City of Crescent City 2015 Urban Water Management Plan. An exciting read which it is and coming up to give us some great details would be our public works director Eric Weir mr. Weir thank you mayor Gastineau members of the council yes it is urban water management plan time so we uh, get to run through this exercise every five years because we are an urban water supplier so the urban water management plan act of 1983 requires uh, us to put together this plan this plan in general uh, is, it just provides the framework for long-term planning for, for water uh, agencies. The water is of course of uh, more discussion now than it has been in the past and these plans will come to play, uh, to play a major role in the future when talking about water conservation as well as uh, water supply management. These plans in general have the following five components. They need to look at our water deliveries and uses, the water supply sources, so in our case the rainy collector, water efficiency uses, so basically best management practices, uh, water demand management measures, which is our annual reporting and making sure that we're looking at the, the way we're using our water, as well as a water shortage contingency plan. So in the event that we don't have the proper supply uh, based on either drought or say uh, a catastrophe that we have a plan in place that will uh, will make it so that we use less water and that would identify certain things that we're actually going to do and identifies target goals for how much water we will conserve based on on those levels within that water shortage contingency plan so in a nutshell that's that's basically what this plan includes is it covers those five basic principles uh, the Water Conservation Act of 2009 also has a component in here in which it wants us to look at water conservation levels. So what that plan uh, said is you have to establish a base daily per capita water use. Uh, you need to have interim targets and they're basically every five years all the way out to 2020. And the plan and the, the kind of the, the slogan that goes along with it is 20% by 2020. 
So after you establish your baseline, then you have to have a 20% reduction in use by the year 2020. So if you look at how Crescent City is doing in complying with this goal, you see that our interim goal for 2015 is 131 gallons per capita per day. Ultimately in 2020, we need to be down at 116. Currently, we are at 97. So we have already met our 20% reduction by 2020. Now the government, the governor's water conservation, emergency drought regulations go above and beyond this. So this doesn't mean we're in compliance with their new water conservation, but we are in compliance with the 2020. Seems like we're meeting it by a long shot, but really, you know, 97 gallons per day per capita compared to 116, that's a couple minutes longer, you know, in, in the shower. It's, it doesn't mean that we're there by a long shot. We still have to pay attention to how much water we're using uh, to achieve this goal, but it is something that we'll be watching. Uh, so that's, that's in general the goal that we have to meet. Uh, the urban water management plan also establishes the method to which we can determine if our water source is reliable because every water source is different. You know, some communities like in San Diego, they have desalinization plants. That's their water source. Others have giant reservoirs that they can pull from that and snowpack that really feeds. Ours is the Smith River. So if you look at this, you'll see the graphs that look at the Smith River since I believe the 1930s, its flows both high and low compared to rainfall data. And you can really see that, that in, in almost every scenario, that low flow gets to a stable amount regardless of the rainfall. Seems like in the late fall, we hit a stable level. So we think our water supply is, is a good water supply. We think that it is reliable and that it will meet our demands, not only now, but into the future. And then you see this plan is, uh, is required uh, not only every five years, but also to keep us in compliance with the grants that, that we are going for. The elevated tank seismic retrofit grant that we applied for and received approximately $500,000 of funding. This was a check mark that we had to have this plan in place in compliance with current regulations in order to receive that money. Same with the Prop 84 money that are going to go to rehabbing our sewer lift stations. So how does this relate to the most recent emergency drought regulations? Well, it really, it doesn't at this point. This is a separate plan. This was talked about during the emergency drought regulations, especially once they started talking about moving away from just the one size fits all. They wanted to look at local conditions, which is really what this plan is designed to do is to look at that supply reliability. So the 2015 urban water management plan it was status quo, you must, because it was already too far down the line to, to really address the, the emergency drought regulations. So this meets the urban water management requirements that were set forth back when the, the uh, back a few years ago before the emergency drought regulations. In the future though, as they look at this, they, the, the two will tie, but for now they're really completely separate. What the city's gonna do to comply with the water conservation regulations is we'll be doing an analysis on our supply based on, on the current drought situation and then extending that out three more years as I reported to the council in the past. That's due actually on Wednesday. So we'll complete that analysis over the next couple of days and submit that. That will determine whether or not we still have to continue meeting the 16%, which is completely separate than the 20 by 2020. Uh, so, Basically, that's, that's where it stands. Uh, any questions from the council on the urban water management plan or next steps as far as emergency drought? Good, excellent. No, I, I, I was just impressed by the stats in here that, that, that the, uh, the drainage basin of the Smith River has, it's almost a million, million gallons per year go down? A trillion. It's uh, a trillion. Yeah. Trillion it's almost a trillion uh, yes, it is one of the largest groundwater basins. That's a great known, watershed. You know, and especially in the state. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. So when are we going to do recycled water? 2020? Uh, really? Can't guarantee that. Sorry, I always get you on that one too. Okay, I'm going to open up this public uh, hearing and anybody wishes to make public comment on this you have three minutes please come on up state your name county or city residency yes Eileen Cooper um, 
in I just um, spent the day looking this over as carefully as one can. Um, it just came to my attention recently, so um, this last week. Uh, I think the comment period is a little short for a doc, you know, an important document like this for the public. But I did my best in looking it over today, and. Um, one thing um, that I think would be very useful that I don't see in this is that even though we're not responsible for agricultural uses where people are pulling large quantities of water out of the Smith River and we're not responsible for the um, other water districts that are, are pulling water out, it is important to us to know what piece of the pie we are. So I would like, and I don't see that here, I would like um, to see like the urban, your urban district um, uses what percentage of the, the whole pie and what percentage is ag and what percentage is the Smith River Water District and so that we have a complete picture because if we do run into water problems, it's important to know where are we going to get the most, um, you know, bang for our effort in regard to the whole water usage picture. So um, I would like to see that pie and what piece of it we are um, as an urban user. The other um, issue that struck me is that um, it seems that the growth rate is um, for water use is based on population statistics from census, you know, what the growth rate that's expected. Um, now this, this growth rate um, is at, would be accurately applied if the population increases, your residences would increase, so that makes sense to me. However, the growth rate of uh, the services, um, the um, tourist services, the um, com commerce for the most part that uses great deals of water, um, our hotels, our restaurants. Now that, that is not necessarily dependent upon population growth. And I'm not sure this document um, distinguishes that. We could very well have a small town in the future and yet, in the summertime, have huge inf an increasing influx. Perhaps that increase would be maybe double, whereas our population might just increase a little bit. So there's a great uncertainty of use with the expanding tourist industry that should be recognized. Um, and um, That's a good point. Can you wrap up? <laughs> so we can't apply population growth to all these different s segments of use. You know, like Pelican Bay, sure. their population <laughs> is yeah. not going to keep expanding, right? right? <laughs> so <not>. we hope. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Okay. Okay, thank you, Linda. All right, I will close this public hearing and we'll come back to the dais. And is there any more discussion from the council? Just a quick question to Eric. If we find that that kind of a, of a growth swing occurs, we do an amended plan, don't we? We've done that in the past. I sure, think. yeah. We, we can always do an amendment plan. The other thing is with this, we do do an update every five years. So it, the, it's based on total water production. So we based it on residential growth rate. So that's across all sectors right now. So there is an increase to, to the commercial use. We analyze it every five years. If we do start to see a big swing in that, it'll get caught in that update. And then we can amend it at any time as well. And of course, the hard part with any plan is predicting the future. So five years is not a bad time. Not like we had to go out 30 years uh, for having the loan readjusted for the water board. Exactly. I'd also like to give credit to Freshwater Environmental who helped us put this plan together. Oh, so. right. Thank yeah, you, they Eric. did a lot of work, it looks like. Um, but I do like the idea, that, um, and maybe um, 
we could share this report with George Williamson from LAFCO because LAFCO oversees all the other water service districts just for them to have it in their archives for because all the other water service districts have to do reports to the state as well they do have to do reports to the uh -huh. state and not as thorough as an urban water management right. plan because of our size but right. yes they but, have their but they're reports. the ones that um, anyway it would sure. be um, more comprehensive uh, information for countywide sure and I do yeah. like the idea about the infographic with the pie chart maybe we can throw it up on our, our website or something like that general information on our water system you know just a little extra work for yeah, you no, not a problem. <laughs> not a problem. Eric, after fourth <laughs> of July <laughs> Did, did, I, did I read that even in the really dry years, the, the two or three years in a row, dry years, that where we draw our water from underneath that rainy collector way down deep mm -hmm. really wasn't impacted during those dry years? Is that what it, I understood? It seems, as we've reviewed the data based on rainfall, the, the really dry years, you do see a more of a divergence in the spring where maybe we've had a lot of water in the winter and so your river will get up and that's what we were watching a couple years ago but what we saw this last year is even in the dry months you get to the september october months it seems to hit a very constant level each year regardless of the amount of rainfall that you get hmm. so if, if that makes sense there's almost at that point you have the groundwater basin that you're talking about it's almost maintaining that level of the river versus the big rainfall years will get a lot of runoff that tends to dictate the levels but you come down to almost a, a stable level there. Thank you. That's interesting. Okay. We have discussion questions. Thank you, Mr. Weir. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2623, um, a resolution for the city of Crescent City for the urban water management plan. Second. All right, we have a motion and second. Please pull the vote. Councilmember Holly? Yes. Councilmember Murray? Yes. Pro Tem Inscore? Yes. Mayor Gaston? Yes. And that passes 4 0. Okay, we have no more continuing business. We do have new business. Item number 15 Memorandum of Understanding with the City, oh, excuse me, Crescent City Police Officers Association. Mr. Knight. Thank you, uh, Mayor Gaston, Council Members. I'm going to um, ask the City Attorney to present this item to you, please. Ms. Rice. By way of a brief um, background, the city and the CCPOA began discussing a uh, new memorandum of understanding in the fall of 2015. Based on those early discussions, um, the idea was presented to the city council to go out for a compensation study to see where our officers were paid in comparison to comparable cities. Um, while that study is not yet fully complete, we did receive the raw data um, showing that our officers are currently getting about 18% below the median wage for comparable cities. Um, if you include benefits, that jumps up to almost 25%. So the city and the CCPOA felt like a couple months ago or you know months six weeks ago that we had enough information that we could move forward with negotiations um, and at the direction of the council we did that we're proposing this MOU before you this evening um, some of the significant provisions worth noting are that in order to reach what is the spring 2016 uh, median wage we'll reach by this plan we'll meet that in January of 2018 um, we'll do that by um, doing 4% increases um, in July 2016 January 2017 July 2017 and January 2018 so basically every six months for the next two years that will get us to a 2016 median um, so at that point we might be a little bit below median again but we will have made um, some considerable progress the hope is that that will help us with our uh, retention and recruitment efforts as you know we're currently down to um, nearly half staff I think we have seven out of 12 positions filled at this time um, one other significant change is that we are uh, this MOU would also increase the amount that um, 
officers will be able to use to purchase health benefits. Um, so that will be very useful to uh, many of the officers. Um, in addition, this resolution not only approves the MOU that's before you, it also approves a side letter agreement, which is sort of a um, transition period for the next six months since the officers will not be able to sign on to either new um, health plan or add members until effectively January of 2017. Um, so this uh, side letter provides for a little bit of a transition period. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Rice? Good. I don't have any questions from Ms. Rice. Any comments? I, it did have a, a. No, I'll let it go. Okay. All right. I think I know my Is there any public comment on this issue? A memorandum of understanding with the Crescent City Police Officers Association. Please come on up. I just wanted to know. Name. Do our police officers get medical insurance or not? Do they have to purchase their own medical insurance? They, they get a amount of money for the plan. So that is the city of the Crescent city. city does not provide medical insurance for the police officers of Cre Huh? Yes, we do. You do? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comment? Okay, hey, seeing no other public comment, I'll bring you back to the dais. Any more discussion, questions for Ms. Rice? No, but I do have a, a question for Ms. Lever. Do you, uh, if, if you could, uh, if we approve this, the, the, in the staff report, it, it points to uh, approximately a $100,000 impact for this coming year. Can you extrapolate what that would do for the budget that we just approved in regards to our, our uh, uh, surplus, uh, uh, the set aside that we have of 25%? Will that take us below? No, no, it won't. Um, I don't have the exact dollar amount. I know we were at 26.4%, and so I right, knew we were close. And the were difference close. was, um, I, I I thought we were at like we might be a little 000. below 25 percent. It's going to be just slightly years. below, but, but still not very much. meeting the spirit of the 25 percent goal. Okay. Does that? That's okay. it's, we're, so we're still going to be right in the ballpark of our 25 percent if we approve this. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. It's horseshoes and hand grenades. Slow dances. Slow dances. Horseshoes, hand grenades, and slow dances. Things you like to be close to. Yes. <laughs> I. I, I just like to, to say how pleased I am with this negotiation. I, I think this is going to give us an opportunity to uh, to raise some police officer salaries so that so that we can be competitive in the marketplace Absolutely. and we can we can maybe come up to full force at some point. Um, I, I, and I've, I've said this before, and we've all put public safety as, as our number one concern, and without police officers, we just don't have that. So hopefully this this will indicate that we are showing good faith. And trying to be competitive and they've certainly shown good faith in allowing us two years to get there so uh, I, I'm very much in favor of this particular uh, memorandum of understanding not only um, being competitive but giving our officers what what they deserve is really important to us as well um, you know we appreciate um, all the sacrifices that they've made over the years and and uh, we want to do right by them so I appreciate um, our officers a great deal and and hopefully this will show uh, them how much we appreciate them okay Good. all right do i have a motion um, i would make oh go ahead okay okay go ahead. um i'll make a motion um to adopt resolution 2016-22 a resolution of the City of Crescent City approving a memorandum of understanding between the City of Crescent City and the Crescent City Police Officers Association for July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2018. I'll second that. Great. We have a motion and a second. Please pull the vote. 
Council Member Hawley? Yes. Council Member Murray? Yes. Pro Tem Inscore? Yes. Mayor Gaston? Yes, and that passes 4 0. All right, Chief, go get us some officers. <laughs> Okay, that brings us to the end of our agendized items. We are now to city council items. Is there any legislative matters? I have one. Uh, um, I don't know if you saw the um, email from our legislative representative from League of Cities regarding AV 2788, the wireless telecommunications facilities bill. Um, and if you all would be willing to send a letter of opposition. Um, to. Can we send that letter electronically? I, I yes. noticed in the email that the, the they needed the needed it by t I think tomorrow. So, so. I, that, I was yeah. kind of surprised and that's a that we got the letter that we can use. Yeah, I saw the sample. But so, yes, I was so for for our audience out there. What was the uh, the meat of the? Uh, the of basically, objection? it takes away complete uh, takes away local control, and would uh, allow. Um, uh, cell towers to be set up willing yeah, set, set up by right where they can yeah. place them wherever without even With, to the point of, of without going beyond our own specific codes codes our yeah. the city's uh, own um, ordinances and uh, I, yeah so it would take I, our, our local control away and they could just pop up any place so um, it's really a bad bill it is yeah okay so I think by consensus we like that uh, support letter to go out and we can forward that to you um, for a sample letter to get it drafted for the yes mayor actually to um, thank you council um, through the mayor um, I did actually see this late in the day and I'm okay. glad you did your homework because I didn't think um, I had enough information to actually um, get the authorization to send a letter but tomorrow is the committee hearing and it, it does seem to the talking points for the League of Cities um, you know unnecessarily and unconstitutionally strips local authority over public property and shuts down public input um, uh, provides local discretionary um, prohibits local discretionary review of small cell wireless antennas including equipment preempts adopted local land use plans um, and they're allowed in all zones so it really takes away all of our local authority and I could go on this four or five more major talking points but so I'm glad that you um, were aware of this and actually will direct me because it's troubling yeah great thank, thank you. you any other legislative items no thank you Catherine okay city manager report well I'm gonna pass this off again because I know our public works director wants to talk to the council uh, give you an update on the B Street sewer project and also on a grant attempt we're chasing okay thank you mr. Knight members of the council yes yeah, so just want to take this time real quick B Street sewer project is coming to a conclusion and so the uh, public will see quite a few changes and has seen quite a few changes in the park as well as the upcoming uh, the street work as well so update on the schedule they are working to prep the street for paving this week they have completed the vast majority of the concrete work with curb and gutter paving will occur right now Monday and Tuesday possibly Wednesday of next week so on Wednesday of this week they're going to be shutting down the front street intersection again because they need to prep that intersection for pavement so that will reroute traffic to the lighthouse as well as the uh, as well as the oceanfront lodge there and to lighthouse way that's the shot of the beachfront park master plan so this will come into play all throughout this conversation but so in order to pave b street and through the front street intersection that's going to be shut down on wednesday we'll have to reroute traffic through stamps way which is h street through Howe, and then on around the treatment plant on monday they are planning on paving Howe drive so They'll pave how drive on, on actually they're going to pave front street the intersection on front street on Monday let it set overnight and cure and then they'll reopen front street on Tuesday and then they'll pave how drive the paving might spill over into Wednesday but for the most part that should uh, that should do it for the paving at that point it'll just be some minor cleanup of the project uh, the park unfortunately will not be hydro seated before the fourth there just wasn't enough time to get the hydro seat down and then try to keep people off for the fourth 
fourth it's going to be an absolute madhouse like it is every year around the park people are going to be all over the place hopefully so we are going to hydro seed the following saturday which i believe is july 9th what you'll see in this section of the park right now or at least it's starting to take shape as, uh, as i was talking to mayor gaston a little bit before the meeting the uh, this section of the park which is right near the treatment plant for those of you who can't see my my cursor just uh, just east of how drive where it's going to intersection and is proposed for disc golf that's what the master plan had it's kind of a set aside designated area we could really have a nice disc golf course so we've worked with the contractor we've worked with the disc golf association and we set out three mounds so you'll see some large mounds that'll bring in some natural landscape features that they'll then design their holes around so this will really turn into a nice dedicated area we've also regraded the dog park area so it'll have nice drainage and then this whole area in through here will all get hydro seeded the other thing we've done with the excess material is we've moved it over here to what we call How Drive East. So we've removed the horseshoe pits. That's all nice and graded now. It's about a 2% slope. So when we do build the picnic areas, it'll be a nice accessible area that people can enjoy. Uh, so what we plan on doing in the near future is relocating those horseshoe pits to where they go in the Beachfront Park Master Plan, which would be adjacent to Front Street. So that'll, that'll also happen in the near future. Probably won't happen before the 4th, but before the summer's out, we're planning on having a smaller horseshoe pit area. Other projects that we've been working on as a city that occurred just this last week. We submitted the Front Street ATP grant. So again, that's a $2 million grant that we received the matching funds of approximately 400,000 through the Local Transportation Commission. And what that is, is that'll build this pedestrian trail, a class one trail, all along the south side of Front Street including not the entire parking lot because it doesn't exactly fit into that grant but about half of this parking lot to provide parking f as a trailhead to uh, to beachfront uh, park here and the coastal trail connection so that's a two million dollar grant that we applied for we also just finalized today the grant with the danco group so i'd like to thank uh, mike knight as well as eric taylor for all of their work in association with danco for that and what that's proposed to do is build sidewalks along 8th street as well as the transit center down along the uh, along the east side of Front Street. So a lot of work going into the park. You'll see a lot of changes associated with the B Street project. And then we're just finalizing the coastal development permit to build the coastal access project, which will build a staircase where Stamps Way abuts the How Drive alignment as well as pedestrian improvements. Are they gonna do those nice stamped uh, sidewalks like they did with the other uh, projects yeah. in the park? Yeah, so if we are successful with the both the ATP grant or the uh, or the Danco grant, what you would see all throughout the park is the stamp boardwalk type sidewalks that all match. And do we have extra money from the uh, B Street so we can repave Third Street since it got all chewed up from all that traffic? Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're quite that creative with it, but, but hopefully in the future there'll be some sort of uh, opportunity to redo third. Sure. I can barely get out of my driveway these days. <laughs> it's, uh, yes, uh, unfortunately, as with the state of, of the, the whole state, there, there isn't a lot of transportation dollars. So we are fortunate with the B Street sewer project to be able to repave the street because of it. I just have one question, Eric. If, if we are successful in, in obtaining both these grants, will that provide brand new pedestrian access on both the north and the south of Front Street all the way from the transit center to the end of Beachfront Park? It will, it will provide pedestrian improvements from the transit center on the south side of Front Street, so along Beachfront Park all the way to B Street. Okay. And then on the north side, the pedestrian improvements will stop at H, H Street. Street. And then with the, with, that's with the Danco project. That's the Danco project. So, but then continue, then turn. continue up H Street all the way from north. front all the way to 9th Street. Okay. So the, the remaining pedestrian from H Street going forward on the, on the north side would be part of the ongoing process of looking at the complete front street revitalization. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Yep. Good news. Thank you, Eric. Anything else in the city manager's report? Nothing else to report. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, council reports. Anybody want to go first? No, I am. Sure. I will. All right, Mr. Rins, of course. Um, attended a visitor bureau meeting where we continued to discuss the uh, uh, just ongoing visitor 
issues as well as looking at the uh, completing the contract for the up updating of the uh, capital uh, display. Attended the early literacy symposium, which was very interesting. Very much appreciate the, those who put that together and showed the value of, of uh, investing in our, in our youngest. Um, on, uh, attended the local transportation commission meeting on um, behalf of Mr. Holly, who was out of town. Um, had a special uh, uh, meeting with, uh, for Del uh, Delano Solid Waste Management Authority with Julendra and uh, Recology as we work through some contract issues and look into how we can best serve our community as a whole. Got the privilege of, of uh, recording a public service announcement on behalf of the city. I had somebody come into my office today say, I heard you on the radio. Uh, I'm going to clean up my sidewalk. And I thought, well, that's awesome. Um, and then they said, it didn't sound like you, though. I'm like, OK. Don't know what that meant. but And, uh, and I enjoyed Father's Day. I got to hear from all three of my children and got to see both of my grandchildren on FaceTime. So it was an all in all fantastic day. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my comment was that you probably sounded nicer on the radio. I sounded nicer on the radio. <laughs> yes, <laughs> certainly nicer than I am in person. <laughs> Mr. Let's, get him, Mr. Hall, let's get him a radio. Get him. Um, <laughs> I actually, uh, my, my schedule with the city was a little bit light. I, I was on vacation uh, and out of town for much of the uh, last couple of weeks. But I did want to say that we got together with, with Kimmy and uh, Mr. Short and I uh, did get together. We continue to work on the policies, the ethics policy and, and other related policies that are necessary to bring back. So we haven't forgotten it. And uh, it's actually become a little bit more complicated than we anticipated. Uh, so that will be coming back to you, but we're still looking at other jurisdictions and what they do. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Murray. Well, let's see. Um, since our last meeting, of course, we had election day, and um, I did pop into the um, early literacy symposium, and uh, mm -hmm. it was a packed house, so it, it was, was a great turnout, and uh, that was really nice to see. And then um, we had the um, local transportation commission meeting um, on the 9th, and also, um, and I know um, council member, oh, Vice Mayor Pro Tem, was also there the Recology Chamber Mixer, which was a wonderful turnout. And um, then um, kind of, uh, let's see, I didn't write down too many things. Um, I went to the Oyster Festival um, just by mistake. Um, I was needed to do something in Arcata on Saturday, but um, it was fun because all my cousins work at one of the Oyster booths. so. Um, I got to see them, and then I saw my dad uh, for Father's Day, and uh, that was really nice, and uh, that's it for me. All right, thank you. <clears throat> well, as everybody probably knows, I'm celebrating summer vacation now. <laughs> it's the first official day. It was nice. And so, uh, yeah, last day of school. But before the last day of school, I did attend a Redwood Transit Authority meeting. Uh, Redwood Coast Transit Authority meeting and um, we discussed a lot of um, important items especially about security around uh, where the buses are stored by the fairgrounds and to make sure that uh, you know our public funds are guarded uh, within our fleet and uh, we do have some more buses coming along and we're looking at uh, different routes and and making sure that uh, you know we might be able to uh, offer a tourist a day pass so that they can get on the buses and ride anywhere around any of the places on the uh, Redwood Coast Transit uh, routes and, and uh, leave their cars back at their hotels or however and, and you know maybe get some tours from the drivers. So uh, we're looking at all sorts of things to make it uh, a lot better plus uh, we are going to stop have a stop in the uh, in the park in Prairie Creek so that we can uh, pick up anybody that's coming up from uh, the park or wants to go down for the park for a day and we have uh, three buses that go through there daily so lots of great things about tourists uh, in Redwood Coast Transit and just one of those things for our small community to help uh, get people around 
Uh, other than that, I hope everybody enjoyed Good Father's Day, and uh, like I did with my children. And tomorrow we have a Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority meeting, and uh, County Two by Two. We're gonna discuss that. Okay. Other than that, a pretty light schedule. Uh, we have no further business before this council. We'll adjourn to our next council meeting. Am I reading this correctly? July 18th? That is our next regular scheduled, regularly scheduled meeting. So, so we won't see everybody before the 4th. So have a very safe and happy 4th. Spend it with your family. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Make sure that all your digits are there after be safe and uh, and definitely come on down to the fourth of july parade which is always a fun fun event so you can see mr holly in, in the car <laughs> we'll see. i know i still haven't made the decision to go in there what about you mr inscore are you going to go in the parade i will be in the parade in something we're trying to figure out what that will be all right he'll be riding a tricycle a tricycle <laughs> a tricycle yes maybe maybe it would have like to be one of those big ones. It would have to be a big one. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> so it should be an entertaining fourth, and like I said, everybody be oh, safe. Okay, we will adjourn this meeting until July 18th.